Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing a new movie review this week. And I had a wonderful time when I went to go see it uh, last Saturday as a celebration of my birthday. I had to go out with my father and my sister to go see the movie that we've been all been waiting for because I really loved the original film. And this one is called Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It's a sequel to the original Guardians of the Galaxy. And <clears throat> when I went to go see the movie, I just couldn't help but laugh at how hilarious this movie was. And plus, um, it was quite different from the first movie, because this time they're going for something completely different. But at the same time, it was great to see the entire cast again. Well, yeah, most of the cast, which is uh, the Guardians of the Galaxies themselves. Uh, Star-Lord, yeah, his real name is Peter Quill. Gambara, Drax, Rocket Raccoon, and of course, Baby Groot. Yeah, who was once um, a giant uh, that soon became... A baby. Oh yeah, because because we already know what happened to the other Groot as we know it. So if you saw the first movie, you'll probably see what happens, but not to give it away. But this time um, it's going for a different route. It's it's more about just um, the movie is more about a family than just being just friends who they just met. And they're going around trying to discover what's happening, and and then we begin to find out uh, Star Lord's is real father, and that's a perfect key right there. It's already becoming the highest grossing film to date, and I'm glad to see that it is. And they're definitely going to make another third movie that would follow it. Plus, some of the characters are actually going to appear in the next uh, Avengers movie, which is Infinity War. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm very excited for it. So, I, so I'm, I'm just glad um, we finally got the sequel. And it's also good to see that this movie came out uh, just after my birthday. It came out on May 5th, which was Sequel de Mayo. And I'm just happy that uh, it, it's finally getting the attention it really deserves. You know, after the first movie, because the first movie was a big hit, and you know people weren't expecting much about it, but when they saw the film, they were amazed. I mean, because this is based on the comic book. It, it the comic book actually came out in 2008, so they knew that this was going to be um, really big, and this movie had a lot of cameos in this movie, and we're going to get to it. Uh, once I review the movie, which I'm going to do right now. It stars Chris Pratt, Zoe Sedona, Dave Bustista, Ben Diesel, Bradley Cooper, Michael Worker, Karen Gillian, Palm Kamentif, Elizabeth Debicki, Chris Sullivan, with Sean Gunn, Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell. It's written and directed by James Gunn. The movie begins when the Guardians of the Galaxy team are back, which is Peter Quill, aka Star Lord, Gamera, Drax, Rocket Raccoon, and Baby Groot. They teamed up together to stop an interdimensional monster, a huge creature that actually has all the batteries that's been stolen by. Gamera's and Strange Sister Nebula. So what they did was they're trying to destroy it by actually uh, using all their weapons. While we have Baby Groot actually connecting to the speakers while dancing to a '70s song during the opening credits, which I thought that was really cute. Until Drax actually knocked over the speakers. <laughs> that was funny. Um, so they thought the only way to destroy it was have uh, Drax go inside the creature. By cutting um, the creature open, 
But Gamera suddenly decided that she's going to use a, a long sword to actually slash the creature from the outside. So, which uh, Drax actually came out of it, <laughs> all slimed up. So, so once they were inside the planet uh, Sorberane, where we meet the leader of the Sorberane race, Aisha. They had the Guardians protect battleable batteries from the creature, which apparently Rocket had caught stealing them. Only he stole half of it. So, so the Sorberlians decided to attack the Guardian ship with a fleet of drones, Yeah, which kind of plays out like a video game right there. I mean, you can even tell by all these uh, Atari sound effects. It's like all the drones were just was just uh, using all the ships to attack them so but once they all got hit they just keep <laughs> they just keep getting frustrated completely it's just it's just hilarious that is until all the drones are being destroyed by a mysterious figure which had all the guardians had crash landed into a nearby planet where for some reason Quill suddenly met someone that he'd never thought he would meet his own fodder named Eagle. It was played by Kurt Russell, by the way. So he invited uh, Peter to, who was also accompanied by Gamera and Drax, to his home planet, which also includes uh, Eagle's pet empath named Mantis. So uh, Rocket and Groot decided to remain beyond repairs of the ship in order to guard uh, Nebula. So meanwhile, Asia hires uh, Yondu, yeah, who's played by Michael Wooker, along with his crew, who's been exiled from the greater Revenger community you know, for child trafficking, uh, in order for him to recapture all the Guardians. So they capture Rocket, which apparently Rocket had uh, set up a trap uh, for the entire crew. You know, just to stop him until Yondo came by. And they took him a along with Groot, and then suddenly Yondu becomes um, a traitor, and he got captured too by Taserface. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm getting to that too, because, yes, there's a, there's a character named Taserface, which... It caused everybody to laugh. I mean, yes, even Rocket started making fun of him, too, which I thought that was hilarious. I mean, yeah, any, anyway, uh, Taserface just captured them, including Yondo, and they're going around killing uh, half of their crew. Nebula decided to uh, go after Gamera, which leads to that bigger fight. Meanwhile, um, Ego was basically explained to himself that he's basically a celestial, so he's like a god. He's just talking about um, how he came to this planet and how he became a celestial himself and how he created this entire world that he has. And the fact that he actually left his mother because, well, well there's going to be a dark secret to it which I'm not going to reveal. Because I don't want to, because that, that would spoil the fun. But basically, he, he decided to find a purpose and all this other other stuff to, to collect in order for for him to, um, to stay this planet alive. And not only that, but he gets to meet his son again. So, so that way he gets to react to it, even though he felt pretty bad about, um, about leaving his wife. You know, he really loved her so much. So, Eagle was basically using this planet to actually become more bigger than ever, and more beautiful. And you can actually see all these bubbles um, all the way around, a lot of spears. And it just, there's even a fountain that looks, uh, that's filled with, um, with bubbles and all of that uh, shooting up. And, I mean, the, the entire uh, home just looks amazing. It's just, wow. It's like, you really want to get to know um, Star-Lord's father very well. I mean, there's even some 
some bonding that went into the film where we get to see uh, Ego and, and Star Lord together. They actually had the power. So it just seems like, yeah, this is this is a good moment right there where they actually created the power that he has on his hands and he has the power too, so they go around just you know, throwing a a, a spear, you know, like, like they're playing catch. I, I thought that was a good moment right there. Mantis, on the other hand, um, started to grow closer to Drax. I mean, there was even a scene in the movie where, while they were inside the, the ship, um, Eagle's ship, that he started to see um, some visions about Drax and, and everybody else. And he's starting to get to, to know Drax very well, but he begins to warn Gamera and Nebula that that there's going to be something mysterious that's about to happen. Because chances are, yeah, there's going to be a lot of crazy things uh, that's going to happen to the entire galaxy, including the, the rest of the team. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to give away too much of it, though, but I'm just going to leave it that way. I, I know I've been saying that in some of my reviews, too, but that's what the story was about. And, well, it's not as fresh as the original film. It still was as good as ever, and it's a great follow-up to the story because we get to see what happens next. And it's great to see the Guardians of the Galaxy team again because they really were having a good time. I always love having to see see them bickering at each other sometimes, coming up with all these uh, adult jokes right there. It's just hilarious. I mean, even though they do kind of seem, you know, very vulgar to to some viewers, but still, <laughs> um, it, it's great that they put it in anyway. Um, I mean, yeah, they weren't getting along with each other at times, you know, like with Rocket and, and Star-Lord. Until, no matter what they do, they're going to try to get along. And I mean, the, the whole purpose of this movie is basically, is that they're becoming a family. And that's what the whole key of this movie is about, is that the Guardians of the Galaxy team, no matter how, I mean, not only are they more than just friends, they're just a family. So, of course, even with uh, with Nebula not getting along with Gamera, which leads to that bigger fight that they had, it just also proves that no matter what they do, they're, they're always going to be family. So they, don't, so they don't hate each other at all. I mean, they had trouble, but still, no matter what they do, they're going to they're gonna try to find a way to survive no matter what happens. I, I love all the favorite moments I have with the film was when uh, when Rocket was setting up those traps on the bad guys. Uh, yeah, Taser faces a team, which of course Yondo joins in, and you know, who actually was hard to to go after them and you know, capture Rocket and and Groot, so along with Nebula. One of my favorite moments of the film was when Rocket had set up a trap. On Yondo's crew, which at this rate was Taser Face's crew, and there was like a group of them actually going after the Guardians of the Galaxy. But <laughs> we didn't see it coming because they all got uh, set up inside when they went into the forest, and you know, one group actually got uh, caught by by a bunch of darts and killed them off. The next one was they got electrocuted, and third was when they explode and, and actually went up and down, all the way up high, you know, like they're bouncing around, up and down, up and down, you know, on both sides. It was just hilarious. I, I, I just couldn't stop laughing while they were playing a, uh, a 70s song in there. <laughs> And that that was really funny. I, I I just couldn't stop laughing at that scene, and and all also the scenes where they keep making fun of um, the villain, the Taser Face, and yeah, with Rocket just making all these jokes, you know, wisecracking jokes, and and everybody started laughing. I mean, even the 
even Ayesha started to laugh when when he mentioned uh, his name. <laughs> it's just, it's like, man, I mean, no wonder. Uh, oh, wow. Um, it, it was also fun to see uh, Kurt Russell as uh, Ego, who's uh, Star-Lord's uh, real-life father. I thought it was great to see him, too, because he sort of has a a Jack Burton likeness to it. I mean, even the way he plays the character feels like like he's Jack Burton. Um, earlier in the film, they even show him in his younger self. So we get to see Kurt Russell, which they actually use CGI to to create his uh, younger self. I mean, because nowadays they are doing this in some movies too, where they manage to look look a lot different than what they usually are now. Yeah, because they are old. So, and believe it or not, I couldn't believe this, but they actually used the actor Aaron Schwartz. Yes, the same Aaron Schwartz who was in the Mighty Ducks and Heavyweights to actually um, to use the motion capture, and he's the double for for Kurt Russell's character, Ego. So I guess I could see some of the facial expressions that that uh, Kurt Russell made, and I think it had a little bit of of the facial expressions that. Uh, that Aaron Schwartz had made too. Uh, I mean, granted, if you see Aaron Schwartz now, he's he's very skinny, so he's no no longer you know chubby and fat like like he was in the Mighty Ducks and and heavyweights and you know because he's not a kid anymore. He's he's an adult. He's in his thirties. So wow, I I mean I I read that and I just couldn't believe it. I mean I was like whoa. That must have been awesome. There's also a funny moment right there where Yondo and Rocket have been trapped along with Baby Groot, which then he escaped after they Taser Face's crew started to throw a lot of crap on him. So so Baby Groot decided to help him out, you know, try to make him understand. But unfortunately he keeps making all these mistakes. So then Kragan decided to help because he even told them that uh, the taser face had killed his crew too. Killed all of his men and so he decided to help him out. And <laughs> and then um, John Doe decided to use his telepathic uh, arrow where he goes around killing every every single crew of taser face all the way and enough for them to escape and they did so they can go over to that planet so they can go save uh, the rest of the, the team. Yeah, which leads to it. It was great. I loved that. So, wow, I, I, I mean, I, I read that and I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I was like, whoa. That must have been awesome. And plus, there's even uh, a cameo appearance by Sylvester Stallone. He makes an appearance which almost seems almost like a a resemblance to uh, to cliffhanger, like it was a cliffhanger reunion right there. I mean, I was almost going to have a a Tangle and Cash reunion just to see Sylvester Stallone and and Kurt Russell in one movie because after all they were both in Tangle and Cash. But of course, Michael Rooker is in this movie, and he was in the first movie too. But having to see Stallone and and Rooker together, yeah was like, yeah, and having to see them yelling at each other almost remind me of, of Cliffhanger right there. So that was the closest thing we can get. Um, and by the way, uh, his character that he played is, is Starkar, uh, Starkar Olgor. Yeah, which he's known as uh, Starhawk. And I'm like, Starhawk? I'm like, whoa, this this is starting to remind me of, of that movie that he did uh, called Over the Top because his character was uh, was named Hawk. So, wow, this this is really something. I mean, I, I wonder if, if, Gunn, if the director, if the writer and director James Gunn must have thought of that, but I guess that's what he did. Well, anyway, it was great to see him in the movie, even though it was a small role. Uh, not only that, but we also saw Ben Rames in the film and Michelle Yeo. Uh, they they all made appearances. 
Oh, and on top of that, there's even a small cameo of Howard the Duck. Now, if you saw the, the first movie and you watched the post-credits, um, which I didn't mention in, in, my, in my first review of the film, in my uh, original review, there's actually a cameo of Howard the Duck that's being voiced by Seth Rogen. And Howard the Duck looks so different compared to the, the movie version from 1986. So it was nice to see him, but too bad it was a tiny role. But still, it was. I guess they had to be part of the universe right there. A lot of great special effects in this movie. I mean, even though they're all done in CGI, of course. It doesn't hurt it. And, of course, because there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, a movie like this should be done in CGI. I mean, it works. It, it just brings the story to it. And, and it has a great story to tell because we get to learn about how the characters are. And how they react. I mean, there's even a scene where, where Star-Lord is trying to react with, with Gamera. Because it because deep down of it, you, you know, you have a feeling that they're actually going to love each other. So there's some good chemistry right there, but even though they're not really um, into it that much. <laughs> yeah, and, and then, of course, they did throw in some other jokes, too. I mean, mostly uh, 70s and 80s related, like references to to the TV show Knight Rider. And, and there's other songs, too, uh, that they had. Because he also has a uh, a cassette that's that's a mix of all these songs. The so one was buying one, the other one's buying two. And with his uh, his Sony Walkman that he has, it's just wow. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, it's it's a fun movie. Uh, I loved it. I loved the characters that they got. It was great to see them again, and. They had a good time. It's um, just uh, just be aware about the dark secret that this movie has because chances are you're going to be uh, in for it. But anyway, um, I definitely recommend Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, and I give that movie four and a half stars. I'm Justin Bora and I'll see you later. Bye.